Hello everybody, uh, this is Zavav Shandilya, MBBS student at ESIC Government Medical College, Hyderabad. Uh, this is my first YouTube video and I just randomly picked uh, the parasite Schistosoma hematobium to start with. Um, this is an important uh, microorganism for your exams. Uh, you'll study this under the, under the urogenital section and I'll be teaching you guys in the form of a mind map because I feel uh, this is much easier to visualize and you can also learn better from this uh, however i do advise that after watching this video you do try to make your own mind map uh, to retain the information better and all the information taken in this video is taken exclusively from the apurva shastri textbook for microbiology and so you guys can follow along so <clears throat> let's get started so first of all uh, schistosoma hematobium uh, this is the causative agent of the disease urinary schistosomiasis and we'll be talking about uh, this parasite uh, in four uh, typical headings introduction uh, life cycle pathogenesis and lab diagnosis I, uh, we'll also talk about the treatment uh, briefly so let's get started with the introduction uh, first of all just uh, soma hematobium it's broadly uh, classified under the blood flukes or the trematodes right and uh, uh, something else about it is that it resides in the venous plexus of the bladder and ureter. This is very important because this is a part of the life cycle as well. So it resides in the venous plexus of the bladder and ureter. And uh, uh, epidemiologically, it is rare in India uh, and it's endemic to the Middle East and Africa. This is not that important for your exams, although. Uh, now, uh, coming to the life cycle. So the host for uh, this parasite is the definitive host is the man that's the main host uh, however the intermediate host is uh, the freshwater snails and this will become evident in the life cycle so first of all uh, the mode of transmission is uh, contaminated water so through contaminated water the cercaria larva which is actually the infective form the cercaria larva it will penetrate your skin and then go into the systemic circulation and this is where uh, the development in man starts so after going in the systemic circulation it progresses to enter the through the portal system and uh, it goes to the bladder and ureter venous plexus and before that it converts into the adult worm so the cercaria larva came into the skin systemic circulation uh, in the portal system it converts into the adult worms and then it finally reaches the bladder and ureter venous plexus its main site for fertilization uh, where it fertilizes and eggs are produced so this is the pre-patent period because it takes three months for the eggs to get uh, produced so this is the pre-patent period uh, the parasite is in a uh, dormant stage while this time uh, and then after three months uh, the eggs are produced and then they are fi finally excreted in the urine and then of course the urine uh, goes in the contaminated water or it forms the contaminated water and then the, yeah, the eggs then hatch into the cercaria larva and then the cycle continues so this is the life cycle uh, so after life cycle if that's clear let's talk about the pathogenesis briefly so pathogenesis this uh, will cause acute schistosomiasis and chronic schistosomiasis so acute schistosomiasis obviously is a less severe condition as compared to the chronic one so acute will consist of dermatitis and allergic or pruritic lesions. There are no other major systemic manifestations, just dermatitis, allergic and pruritic lesions. Uh, next, coming to the chronic schistosomiasis, which is a major uh, disorder. Here we'll see uh, various uh, pathologies like uh, there'll be urogenital disease, there'll be obstructive uropathies, there will be bladder carcinoma risk and also involvement of other sites. So we'll talk about this one by one. First of all, coming to the urogenital disease. So these adult worms, which we talked about in the life cycle, these adult forms, when they lay the eggs, these eggs increase in number. And the problem is these eggs, they tend to have terminal spike, uh, spines, terminal spines, which can be seen in this diagram. This is the terminal spine I'm talking about. And these spines are actually responsible for the pathogenesis because these spines, they damage the bladder mucosa 
and this is what causes hematuria and dysuria that means blood in the urine and painful urination this is because of the spines on the eggs which causes these two manifestations dysuria and hematuria because of spines on the eggs next these eggs also tend to release certain soluble antigens and since these are soluble antigens they will trigger a hypersensitivity reaction in this case and the hypersensitivity reaction uh, on a persistent scale it will cause granuloma formation the egg granuloma formation so the two manifestations till now uh, this uh, because of the spines dysuria hematuria and because of the soluble antigen we see granuloma formation now the third thing is these eggs they might deposit in the scrotal lymphatics right in the scrotal lymphatics in males and this can cause elephantiasis of scrotum or the penis so this is obvious because the eggs they are so much in number that they may obstruct the scrotal lymphatics and then obviously there will be a enlargement in the scrotum and the penis so these are the urogenital diseases coming to the obstructive uropathies as the name suggests uh, there will be obstruction uh, so first of all how does that come to be uh, the granuloma which was earlier formed due to the egg so granuloma is a type of injury right so where injury uh, comes to be there is supposed to be healing and healing will be in the form of fibrosis initially so this fibrosis uh, the granuloma uh, turns into fibrosis so that fibrosis will actually cause the obstruction of ureters and this obstruction can then uh, if you obstruct it then because of the increase in the structures behind it there can be hydrourethra there will be an increase in the size of ureter and hydronephrosis right so this is because of the obstruction of ureters you might get hydrourethra and hydronephrosis this is because of the obstruction okay next uh, one of the more important manifestations which are tested on various exams uh, whether usmle or your board exams bladder carcinoma there's a risk of development of bladder carcinoma because of this parasite and especially the most important thing you should remember is that the most common type of cancer associated is a squamous cell carcinoma this is very important uh, with a lighter worm load you may have a chance to develop a transitional zone carcinoma but the thing you ought to remember is the squamous cell carcinoma this is the uh, most important detail and so there's a risk of squamous cell carcinoma with a uh, schistosoma hematobium infection finally coming to the in there may might be involvement of other sites like uh, the x via the plexus they may get access to the spinal cord liver or lungs which are the other sites via the plexus they may access these sites and form granuloma there as well and this can uh, result in other uh, extra manifestations so these are the main pathogenesis of the parasite so we saw definitely because of the x we saw dysuria hematuria because of the spines because of the antigen we saw a granuloma formation then in the lymphatics we saw elephantiasis because of the obstruction uh, because of uh, we also saw hydrourethra and hydronephrosis because of the obstruction of the ureters and we saw squamous cell carcinoma risk is there which is a bladder carcinoma and there might be involvement of other extra urinary sites like spinal cord liver lungs where granuloma formation might occur after life cycle and pathogenesis let's go to the lab diagnosis the final most important uh, aspect of microbiology so here we'll talk about the antigen detection antibody detection histopathology and microscopy starting with antigen detection uh so the most two most important antigens which are detected here are the caa and cca all right so these stand for the circulating anodic antigen caa and circulating cathodic antigen so this is easy to remember the caa anodic and cca cathodic and of course these are antigen detections so these are detected by elisa coming to the antibody detection uh, we have two methods the hama eitb hama eitb and hama fast elisa right these are the two techniques what these stand for if you want to know uh hama is the hematobium and mansoni antigen which are the two species there's also schistosoma hematobium uh, and schistosoma mansoni these are the two organisms so this is the hematobium and mansoni antigen and eitb stands for enzyme linked 
इम्यूनो ट्रांसफर ब्लॉट राइट सो दिस इज हेमा ई आई टी बी एंड हेमा फास्ट लाइजा फास्ट स्टैंड फॉर द फैल्कन एस एस स्क्रीनिंग टेस्ट यू डोंट नीड टू रिमेंबर द फुल फॉर्म्स बट यू डू नीड टू मैंशन दैट एंटीबॉडी डिटेक्शन इज बाई हेमा ई आई टी बी एंड हेमा फास्ट एलाइजा ओके Uh, so after antigen detection, antibody detection, let's talk about histopathology. So you will definitely do a bladder mucosa biopsy. Why? Uh, because as mentioned, there's a risk of bladder carcinoma, a squamous cell carcinoma mainly. So you will do a bladder mucosa biopsy to rule out cancer, and a cervical biopsy is also suggested. And here, what you'll observe is X. The X will characteristically be seen. Uh, finally, coming to the microscopy, the hematuria portion of the urine. will show x with terminal spines as discussed earlier in the pathogenesis x will have spines so this is what will be observed in the microscopy that the hematuria portion will show x with terminal spines also so this is the urine analysis also there will be detection of non operculated terminally spined x similar non operculated terminally spined x in the urine or feces this is characteristic you have to remember this sentence non operculated terminally spined x in the urine or feces so this is the microscopy this is the lab diagnosis antigen detection caa cca antibody detection hama eitb hama fast elisa histopath blood biopsy cervical biopsy microscopy you have to detect the x which are characteristically non operculated terminally spined x in the urine or the feces coming to the treatment briefly just the names praziquantel is one of the treatment options and metrifonate i am not going to the details of the treatment uh since this is a microbiology discussion so let's sum it up sum it up here so schistosoma hematobium it's a blood fluke right and it mainly involves the venous plexus of bladder and ureter how in the life cycle we can see The circulatory larva is what penetrates the skin through contaminated water. It goes to systemic circulation. There it forms the adult worms. These adult worms they reach the bladder and ureter plexus where they will fertilize and lay eggs. These eggs will be excreted in urine, and then the life cycle continues. Right? The pathogenesis we have seen dysuria, hematuria. We have seen granuloma formation. We have seen elephantiasis. Uh, we have seen hydronephrosis, hydroureters. We have seen squamous cell carcinoma. and we have seen granuloma formation in other extra urinary sites and uh, we know the reasons for these which will be discussed in the lab diagnosis that we have antigen detection antibody detection histopathology microscopy antigen detection caa cca antibody hama eitb hama fast elisa histopath blood mucosa cervical biopsy uh, and microscopy we will detect non operculated terminally spined x okay so This was the video on Schistosoma hematobium. Hope you like the video, and please support this channel. Uh, I'll be uploading a lot more videos in the coming days. I don't know when, but uh, I have many microbes ready. So if I get the support on the channel, I will upload more of them. So please let me know how you like the video. What changes I need to make? This is definitely my first video, so any kind of constructive input is. appreciated thank you very much